right then. It is 20 past nine on a Saturday morning. Oh, I've just got up. Oh, we'll look at this in a minute. Let me just get this set up. Uh, but my name's Matt. Welcome back to the shop. Don't, don't play the tune. Stop. I'm all over this now. <laughs> You'd think after a hundred and what is it episodes, I would be. <laughs> right then. Uh, where are we? We are. Uh, we're getting there. We're literally getting there. Right, so we're at indicators done space exclamation right any road so this is um Thelboy's garage vlog and dealers rant i just thought it's, it's not very long just had it demonstrated to me exactly why dealers are such a bad press you can tell he wrote this guy and why i hate them so much let my guard down oh god and try to do business with one and got the time honored attitude. How do these idiots still have a business? Oh, this is that trailer. Um, and further back than that, this is gonna be tasty. So, someone sent me this, Matt. You know who you are, <laughs> you little shit stirrer. Um, but yeah, let's go for it. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. The DL fine. Let's see where this goes. Hi folks, welcome back to the Ghost. A very quick video log. Uh, I've got to share this with you, I really have. Now I know that you've been following Project Rat Trailer. Um, and for oh, the trailer is amazing, but it's too old. It's too old and crummy and yeah, it goes on forever, I think. Further back than that, um, rat bite known as damage. And before that, the iron. Uh, if you go back down the videos, there are nearly 200 of them for you to look at. Um, and they go right back to the time when I first got a camera and decided to start doing this stuff. Now, uh, quick bit of history, what happened, uh, I built up, I had a brand new fat boy, saved up, sold my soul, got what I wanted. Um, my business was doing okay and uh, everything was cool, but what happened, the recession hit and we decided we had to pay the tax bills and as so many people, we staved off our business closure by taking action and that action was to sell my fat boy and I then uh, I bought an XR1200 and I traded that down to an 883 iron which I had some great fun making projects. Uh... It's weird, it's like the recession hit so I sold the motorbike, it's like oh, oh that's a, a drastic change and maybe, maybe two, although I'm sure that that thing sat right here is a Harley Davidson but eh, whatever. Um, making parts for it. Uh, lowering it, that it was useful for a lot of videos, and then finally we had to sell the iron, and I got the bandit. Now the bandit's turned into the rat bike known as Damage, so that's been cool. Made use of each of the steps backwards, and made them count. Yeah, if you don't know what this is, this is just a turd, right? Just don't, just don't ask, right? And then you won't be disappointed. <laughs> Come on, count. Look, right, you're doing that thing again. There. In this instance, um, we decided camera. that in the end, the business had to be downsized. And me and Penny, we downsized it. She now runs the business. That's why she's a clever girl. She's very resourceful. She's mm. So, as far as I know, the, the business is a jewellery business. She's a jewellery designer. and Oh, he said. Uh, she's, she's doing okay. For me, I went back working full time. Um, I have a well-paid career and I'm earning money again. And What's that again? back working full time um i have a well-paid career and I'm he has a well-paid career it's a shame he doesn't really understand english that much I'm earning money again and reasonably well-paid career and i'm putting myself back into my career and i'm saved some money now that's where we are today that's up to date me and penny have saved up some money and i'm in a position where um as the train project is drawing to a close i'll be able to stand up against the wall and then embark on the next project and that's going to be a bike build i've been saying that for a long time now <laughs> i wanted to share this with you because i just got off the phone to a dealer uh, who had a bike that I saw, uh, which was a good potential bike to buy. And this, it just reiterates what I've said. Now, uh, those of you who know me, those of you who follow videos, I appreciate it all. You know that I'm quite cynical about bike dealers. I don't have a very respectful attitude to them, and it's not because um, I think I'm better than them. In fact, I'm not. But the principle is uh, <laughs> their attitude. <laughs> so, let me get this right. It's like, do I think I'm better than them? No, I'm probably not, right? I'm not better than them. 
but their attitude attitude is shit. Right, so if their attitude is shit, but they're better in every other respect, that is kind of like saying, I am better than in attitude, but other respects I'm not. <laughs> Stinks. And I just had it reaffirmed in the greatest way. Just relay this to you. I phoned this Muppet up and said, hey, mate, you got a bike for sale. I've just seen it there. Just get this straight. It's not a Harley dealer. It's not even a bike dealer. What he is, he's a messer. He's a guy who sells parts in a little grubby shop in South London. And you see his website, very fancy website, and there's a few photos of the shop, and you see what the shop is. It's just a little grotty parts shop that sells bits and bobs. I still don't see the problem here. It just sounds like a lot of nasty. But we'll see why. Nothing special. Certainly... I haven't seen this, by the way. Not one of the players. Just a little backstreet shop, one-man band with a little till. That's it. What's wrong with that? Like, sit, been serious, right? What is wrong with that? Here we go, right? So, it isn't a proper manufacturing facility, right? It's not a proper workshop. It's just a shed at the end of a long garden... You know what I mean? On a council estate somewhere in the middle of fucking back end of nowhere. And in that shed, there's some grotty old, tired old man with some fucking tattoos who thinks he's hard and he can't keep his hair fucking sorted out. And he just sounds like a fucking farmer and he just tinkers away with his little fucking little shitty welder. It's not like a top of the range thing or anything. Talk about Craig, all right? <laughs> You get what I mean, right? You can do it with anything and anyone, right? It it, it, it means nothing, but I want to hear why. But he's got a bike there for sale, just one bike. That often happens. Now, funny. Finally... What do you mean that often happens? What often happens? So I'm confused. Does this guy sell bikes or does he sell parts? And if he's just got a one off bike, so fucking what? Nothing special. Certainly not one of the players. Just a little. I don't know who the players are either. Like I say, there's some grotty ass man, right? Who, you know, he just sounds like a fucking yokel, lives in a village in the middle of fucking nowhere, back and beyond, no one cares about that kind of thing. Backstreet shop, one man band with a little till, that's it. But he's got a bike there for sale, just one bike, that often happens. Now, that often happens. Jedi mind trick initiated. Hey, Mark, so give us a bit of background, mate. Where's this bike come from? You don't sell bikes. What's, what's, what's the score? Is this your bike? If he didn't sell bikes, then... Yeah, it's been his bike for about six months. He apparently bought it from someone who passed away, a friend of his or customer who used to buy bits and bobs from him, and right. etc. Uh, so that we've established that, and I believed in the bike, and I read the write-up, and I wanted to own it. I felt that it was a good purchase. I got... Oh, so he's not that much of a cock, then. Well, me and Penny talked about the budget. We decided on a figure, uh, and the figure he wanted was a figure I was happy to pay. Wasn't going to haggle, wasn't going to mess about, was going to offer him his money. So I find a guy, I say, yeah, mate, uh, I'll give you what you want and I'll come and get it. Now, my situation is, I've sold all these bikes, what I just said to you a minute ago, I said, that's where I am, I've saved up the money and I need to just come and get this. And I live 200 miles away on the south coast, right. we were up in London. Uh, and he said, yeah, yeah, whatever, you know. He said, then he says, can you make it quick, because I've got a lot to do. Right. Maybe because you sound like a bit like a prick. But the thing is, it's like this. Why are you going all the way to South London? Just out of curiosity, but whatever. If it is 200 miles away, there are other bikes, but... I was stunned. Why? I said, so, okay. I didn't bite on that. Cause... No, because it might be this, right? He just said, I've just told him what I told He's like, dude, he's running a business or whatever. He might have customers there. He's like, yeah, can you fucking hurry up? Are you coming to buy the bike or not and when? You know what I mean? It's like... Let's just go back to what you said. Saved up the money and I need to just bike and I read the write up and I wanted to own it. I f there you go, you want the bike, right? Cool. Felt that it was a good purchase. I got, me and Penny talked about the budget. We decided on a figure uh, and the figure he wanted was a figure I was happy to pay. Wasn't going to haggle, wasn't going to mess about. So now I've got, got I've got time to sit here and listen to this shit. And so have you obviously watching the video. Some guy who might be like, have customers and stuff, he's on the phone with you going, right, all right, well, do you want to buy the bike? Fucking get on with it. And he's a fucking cockney, come on. Funny. So I find a guy, I say, oh, mate, uh, I'll give you what you want and I'll come and get it now. My situation is, I've sold all these bikes, what I just said to you a minute ago. I said, that yeah, exactly. Right, if he says, I want to come and buy it, okay then. And then he comes out, and I'll, I'll just repeat what I said to you. Yes, 
This guy's not a bike dealer, you've said yourself. Like, you can sit and chat on the phone to some guy who's on commission at a dealership for fucking ages. This isn't even a dealer! That's where I am, I've saved up the money and I need to just come and get this and I live 200 miles away on the south coast. You're up in London. Uh, and he said, yeah, yeah, whatever, you know. He said, then he says, can you make it quick because I've got a lot to do. Yeah, it doesn't mean the trip. It means, can you make this conversation quick? And when you say this, you're not getting... I live 200 miles on the south coast and you're in south London. And? Right? Yes? What? What? Do you, you sound like you want some special treatment. You sound like you want me to do something. Fucking get to the point. I was stunned. I said, well, OK. I didn't bite on that because I just... <laughs> I was a bit stunned for a minute. Yeah, okay, because I'm thinking... Well, do you want the bike, or do you want to fucking date him? I, I don't get... Bite on that, because... If I go to some dealer, just say if I, I want this bike, just say they're selling a fucking, I don't know, a Buell Lightning or something for fucking two grand, and I turn up and I'm there, and it's... Is that two grand? He's like, yeah, it's two grand. I'm like, all right, and I've got two grand, and I'm like this. And I look at him and go, mm, he's not very good looking, is he? And he, his breast stinks a bit, and he looks like he's got a bit of a funny eye. It looks like he's on some kind of register. I don't care, I'm after the bike. Just, I was a bit stunned for a minute. Yeah, okay. Because I'm thinking, yeah, what you've got to do is talk to me because I'm here with money on the end of the phone. No, no, you've already said you want the bike. He's got you. So fucking get the bike. Anyway, you're obviously counting your spark plugs or something, which is way more important. There might be a customer who's actually got money there and then for something else. You're just some guy on the phone who may or may not turn up. So I let this guy go on, and he said, well, you know, you know, I, I get a lot of this, you know, I don't want to part exchange for being messed around. There you go, then. I said, well, I'm not going to mess you around, I'm just going to give you the money. But I don't know who you are, you prick. And the thing is, you are a prick. <laughs> and I pop up Sunday and pick it up. Oh, no, 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 he said, I ain't open Sundays, I, ain't, I, I don't do Sundays. Said, well, he might be visiting his kids in Nottingham. So, but you're a one-man, you're a one-man band, you're a, oh. you're a single shop on your own, you're an owner, yeah. can't you just... Hand me the keys. Are you fucking stupid? No. I said, why don't, why don't you ride it home Sunday and I'll come to your house and come get it. Oh, no, 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 Sunday. I don't, I don't do Sundays. I don't get out of bed till two o'clock. Really? Really, mate? That's up to him. It's his Sundays. God. I couldn't believe it. So... I'm sorry. I'm sorry, right? But what I do in my spare time is what I do in my fucking spare time. I could be out chasing hookers until four o'clock in the morning on a Saturday night. So I'm sorry, but I don't get out of bed until two. You could be a what? You could be a countrywide renowned swinger, right? You could have a dong that's like four and a half fucking foot long, right? No one knows what you're doing. You could be talking. You could be shooting an indie film. You could be seeing your kids, right? You could drive and spend all this time. You could drive all the way up to bloody fucking Leeds, right? And have to spend some time with his kids. And by the time he gets home, it's two o'clock in the morning. Right? He does this every Saturday. Right? And he don't get out of bed until two. What the fuck is it your business? It's a Sunday. He is not a dealer. You're the one who said this. He has a bike. Quite honestly, in the end, I can't buy it. I work six, six and a half days a week. Well, imagine if it was reversed, right? And you turned around and he said, I can only do fucking Monday to Friday. And you're like, I work six days a week. Sorry. Basically, I do 13 days in a row, then have one Sunday off, then work through the next one, and so on, as I have been doing, which is why I have to fit this in at certain times. This guy... Well, no, no, we want you to do this while you're at work, fuckhead. You see, it works the same way, it works the other way around. They want to know. I'm there. I'm on the end of the phone. 200 miles away, with no fucking money. So I might... I bet that bike was sold. Please have my money, sir. Can I buy your nice bike? Now, if, if you said this when you were studying the shop, I'd be like, oh, yeah, he's a bit of a dick. Why won't Why won't he sell it to you? Unless he really doesn't doesn't like you because he knows you Del Boy off Del Boy's garage and he doesn't like you. He didn't want to know. Not interested. Not interested. Don't do Sundays. I said, all right, all right. Let me think. Uh, oh, so you can be flexible. Saturday afternoon. I could have probably made London about four or five o'clock if I left work early and straight there. Well, no, no, you can't. But, but, but you can't book a fucking day off. Like this guy who's day offs on Sundays and you want him just to magically open up? No. Oh, well, Saturdays I'll shut at 12. Well, he shuts at 12. See, this guy's trying to make it just about as hard as it can be. 
The book of day off. <laughs> Nini has look, okay, mate, look, unless... If I go to the fucking passport office, or anywhere, right, any, don't matter, if I go to the post office at fucking midnight, fucking cunt's closed, and I ring up the guy, uh, dude, this is convenient for me, I work, just say I work nights, right, I work nights, I work dodgy hours, or whatever, it doesn't matter, It get a grip, you better let If I can come and meet you, Sunday or Saturday, Saturday late, what about Saturday evening, you know, not interested. Puts the phone down on me. Don't want to know. Because you're a prick. Because you just waste his time for 20 minutes talking about what you're doing with your other bikes. Why does he care? He, he, the ego on this guy. If I get on the phone... I literally did it, not yesterday, the day before. I ring up this place and I say, right, I want these parts. And they're a bit of a funny one. Um, Can I send you the drawings? And they're like... um. Yeah, yeah, you know, we can send you the, send us the drawings. So I send the drawings over, and they're like, um, oh, well, we need an isometric blah, blah, blah to make sure we get orientation right, this shit, this shit. And it's it's really thick, right, a really thick plate, and it needs to be fucking plasma uh, flame cut out. And we're doing all this shit, and they're like, oh, so, well, we can't do this because we can't do this. And I said, well, all right, then, what happens if I... And I've got to go around them saying, well, I'll you cut that bit out, I'll take it to this place, and then they can do that bit, and then I'll bring it back and you can finish that bit off. Is that all right? We'll have to do that as two separate jobs, two different work orders, basically. And I'm like, all right, then. It's not ideal for me. I have to go and pick something up that's half done, go and drop it off somewhere else so they can do it. And then when I get to the second place, they're like, oh, dude, we kind of missed the slot. We're going to have to do it next week. Fine. I'm asking to do something weird, right? I'm asking you to do something that's not normal. So I've got to be accommodating, right? This guy is open Monday to Friday, and he opens on a Saturday until 12. Like he said, he's not a dealer. You say dealer rants, this guy's a parts dealer. You're not talking about the same... Well, unless you are talking about the same thing, but you are asking a parts dealer to be all-encompassing and all fucking this, that, and the other... For a bike, bike dealers and parts dealers are two completely different things, right? Most bike, most parts dealers, well, a lot nowadays it's changing a bit. But back in the day, back when this was, whenever this was, just say in the two, oh, 2012, maybe not, but two in the 2000 era, parts places used to shut at 12 on Saturdays, were open Sundays. Euro car parts are now, and even they've got limited hours, and that's for cars. Um, but dealerships, a lot of dealerships are open Saturdays and Sundays because they know it's the weekend and people go and wander in and have a look. But a lot of dealers are also closed on Sundays. So I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. That's it. Finished. Can't buy the guy's bike. He doesn't want to sell it. No, 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 no. He put the phone down on you. Right? If you turned up with the cash, I'm sure he fucking would. But this just brings me back to what I said. The reason I'm sharing this with you is because I've always said what I feel about dealers. They're lazy, they're arrogant, they're greedy, and they feed off of us. Us bikers that, that make, build, and ride our own bikes, they feed off us like parasites. I hate dealers, and this guy has just completely reaffirmed it. I've known one good salesman in my motorcycle. This is not a salesman, though, really. This is a parts dealer. The difference between a salesman and a parts dealer are completely fucking different things. Right? Completely different things. You know, usually when you go to a, a, a sales room kind of thing, bikes are a bit different, but just think of a car one to give you the absolute difference. Tight, gelled up hair, perfume, bit of eyeliner, bit of, you know, coffees, bit, uh, coffees, you know, America, not Americanos, Frappuccino bullshitters, you know, with the big massive knots, whatever you call it, with the Windsor knots, the big ones, massive ones, stupid ties. Squeaky shoes, you know, them fuckers, right? <laughs> but you get what I mean, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, my uncle's got one of these, my dad's got one of these, I've had six of these, these are fuck this, now oh, this one's fantastic, that one, nah, that one I get less commission on, so fuck you. You know, car phone warehouse type guys, right? Salesmen, so they've got the gift of the gab, the pitch, and they've got a single track mind, it's commission, and you can't blame them, it's the job, right? And they can make silly money out of these things. Um, and at the end of the day, they're just selling. It, it, it's a they sit around all day. Fuck it. I, I've seen them. You know, you just 
so they're just sat on the phone or sat and no one comes in there's a cam a cam am place you know the the three wheeler uh, brp fucking stupid the bikes with two wheels at the front and a wheel at the back fucking stupid things them guys i see them all the time because they're in the village and they sit around fucking most of the day doing fuck all not the tapping on the laptop or the cleaning and stuff but you get what i mean they're not doing what they're paid to do really yeah and, and the thing is it's not their fault because there's no fucking customers at, at you know and they take them out these old boys turn up and take them out on test rides because they're scared of leaning over a bit you know, oh, stability. But if you've got, maybe if you've got stability problems or Parkinson's, I don't fucking know why you'd want one, but maybe you've got a reason to want one. They're completely different than going into fucking Euro park, car parts or anywhere like that or going into fucking Andrew Pages or something like that. Going into them kind of places or going to, you know, just say Wheels in Peterborough or anywhere like that. You go to these places, it's completely different. And I've only ever bought a brand new bike once, so I never go to these places. You know what I mean? My only interaction was buying the Z900, and it was really easy, fine, and I don't... It was different because I went in and said, I want that bike. And he's like, all right, do you want it in that green... Uh, no, I'm not bothered. No, he says to me, if you get it in that colour, black frame, green, green frame, black bike, it's like a fucking, I don't know, a month or two waiting list. Oh, we can get that and you get it next week. I was like, fucking give me that. I don't give a shit. Give me that one. He's like, right, do you want anything else you want? And I was like, because he knew. He could kind of tell I just knew what I wanted. I said, I want the seat, the extendable seat for that. He goes, right, cool, we'll add that on. Then we sat down, went through the shit. He didn't even have to sell it, right, because I, I knew what I wanted. Because I'd been on the test rides. He'd seen me a couple of times coming in and test ride like an MT-09, MT I think it was, and some other bits and pieces. Tested ride a few of them and then bought the, the, the Kawasaki. And then that was it. It was There was no fucking around. We went through the, the gap insurance thing. I asked him a bit about you know he, he, he said, do you want it? I said, tell me a tiny bit really quickly. And I just said to him, don't fuck me about just tell me. In little short bursts, so I don't get bored. Let's just go through this. Do you want to pick another plate? Don't care, whatever. Just fucking the first one. That kind of shit. I didn't even bother looking. Um, and we just went through that, and then it was wig bam bam, thank you, ma'am. Got back on my bike, fuck back off, and then turned back up at wheels, and then got on my new bike and fucked off a week later. And then that was that, job done. And the worst thing was getting on a fucking bloody because uh, I was going to get a mate drop me off, and then he was like, fucking, he's got something else to do. He had a, a wedding. No, it wasn't a wedding, it was a christening. So I just basically fucking got the fucking train and the bus. It's only the road, it was Peterborough to Cambridge, it's fuck all. And um, got the bike and fucked off back home, and then that was that. And as far as I'm concerned, that was fine. I don't see what the problem was. Life, and he's the guy who sold me Penny's bike. And I tell you what. Oh, I don't know, I thought this guy doesn't sell bikes. I hate dealers. And this guy has just completely reaffirmed it. I've known one good salesman in my motorcycling life, and he's the guy who sold me Penny's bike. Oh, right, that's it. And I tell you what, with, with, with respect to him, he's no longer in, in the industry, but with respect to him and, and, and others perhaps who are good, the rest of you, you can go to hell. I hate you all. And I, oh. I will continue with my attitude forever. I can't stand bike dealers. Motorcycle dealers are... What about all the people you just lagged off? Parasites. Most of them... Don't it's a bit harsh saying parasites, isn't it? ...don't even know what they're talking about. They don't know about the bikes they're talking about and selling. They just want your money and get lost. And when something's wrong, well, you must have mistreated it, mate. I detest them all. I really do with a vengeance. Well, maybe you did. The thing is, this is I love how that people said it. Maybe you did. And I... We've seen what you do with stuff. I will stand by what I've said. When I buy a bike, I was mad. I relented. Remember him bashing off that bearing off the bottom of... Yeah. I saw the right bike and I just thought, all my standards and all my, my preconceptions, I don't know, I'd, he's a dealer, yeah, I know, but I'll have a go. And I just got it thrown back in my face and I got taught a lesson. But he's not a dealer, you just said. He's not a bike dealer. I said all over again, don't trust these bike dealers. I know there will be someone in the comments to this, and I know there will be. They'll be saying, oh, they're all the fucking sick. They're not. I got pages or wherever, just say Euro car parts, right? And you go online, you go, fucking... Or you used to go in and say to the guy, have you got any fucking Bosch brake pads for a bloody 2014 and say it lay on or whatever? But you go online, you go, this out, you go collect. You turn up and you say, yeah. He scans your code. <laughs> and I just went to go and get some Bosch brake pads, not for a lay on, but I went to get some Bosch brake pads from Euro car parts. Um... Near Team Valley in Newcastle, and the bloke in there served me, recognised me, 
He just stood there and went, "You're off the, you're Matt off the, off the, the off the YouTube." I was like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." Can you get my brake pads? Bit weird. It happens not very often, but when it does, it's a bit. It always catches me off guard. He went in the back, young lad. Obviously at uni or something. This is his fucking Saturday job. Sunday, he was actually a Sunday. Comes in, gives me the pads. I goes, "Cheers, mate." He goes, "Oh, I'll, I'll see you in a bit," which I thought was funny, and I fucked off. Right, and then that was that. Right, I thought that was the parts place. I, I, what what could really go wrong? Usually, when you have logheads with them, it's because you're fucking retarded because you don't know what you're talking about, or you don't. You know what I mean? Because they are what they are, lazy parasites. This guy couldn't care less. I was there. It was a lot of money. You wasn't there though. You were two hundred miles away, and he's he's probably been messed about by a few people, like twats like you. You know, didn't want it. Big wedge of cash. Do you? No, I don't want. But that's not what happened. Do you think if you goes, there's a big wedge of cash for that shit heap of bike you want, he would have gone, thank you. <laughs> of course he would, but you weren't there. Can't be bothered to come and get it. You must be a very rich. What do you mean, can't be bothered to come and get it? Didn't want it. Big wedge of cash. Do you? No, I don't want it. Can't be bothered to come and get it. No, no, he didn't say that. He didn't want to cut... Because he might live the other side of London. So you imagine it takes it... I don't know how long it takes to get across London. You imagine it takes him an hour to get to the shop. You don't fucking show up. Or you're going to be an hour and a half late. So he has to sit around for an hour and a half. And then you don't turn up. That's another hour back home. That's three and a half hours of his Sunday fucked off. And do you think that I think that's happened to him before? You've got to either arrange something like, I'm in the shop Monday to Friday. Turn up in them hours with your cash. If the bike's there, you can fucking have it. That kind of thing. You must be a very rich man, sir. That's all I can say. Principle is when I buy a bike, it will be bought from somebody who needs the money. Someone who's got kids to feed. He, he might. You don't know that. What are you fucking talking about? You're such an arrogant prick. A mortgage to pay, like I did. When I had to sell my bikes over the time to keep the business going, I needed that money, and each person who bought my bikes from me rescued us to a small degree and moved us forward, and that's what I'm going to do with mine. I will buy my bike when I buy it, shortly. It's weird, because he sells his bikes to dealers. Because he's so, because he doesn't want anyone coming to Del Boy's garage, because he doesn't want to be messed about, this, that and the other. He sells his bikes, the Husker Trashed, that fucking stupid, was it a whitish looking, I can't remember if it was a Triumph or not, the, the, the triple Triumph jobby, it was, it was, didn't he do that white or something stupid? But the Husker Trashed, the fucking um, HDS, right? Barbecue Booster will go in a tip. Right, and he won't even dare fucking show that to the fucking son ever again. Um, these have all been sent to dealers, right? I don't know, it's near him. I don't know the name of the dealer, but as soon as these, because people send me images going, oh, look, this bike is for sale here, look, at this dealership. And that's what happens. That's what happens. He's talking shit. He deals with dealers all the time. When he's dealing with Sealy, who do you think he's a salesman, dickhead? They're all the fucking same. Right, a salesman is just a job title. Who do you think you're dealing with? When you fucking buy all the, when you know, when when you, I've got to buy this brand new part from a Suzuki or Kawasaki from Kawasaki. It's a dealership, you dickhead. Fucking hell. From someone who needs it, I'm chasing a couple of others. Time will tell what they are. So there we are, Project Ratchet. What did, did you just say, something? From someone who needs it, I'm chasing a couple of others. Time will tell what they are. So there we are, Project Rat trailer. Just waiting for the scrim. The scrim has been delivered. Uh, it's it's at Penny's uh, workplace, uh, so she signed for it. It will be home, so tomorrow. You signed for a bit of scrim net. Get the fuck out of here. I'm going to get scrim involved, get started on that, and Project Rat Trader will move forward one more step. Not long to go now. We hopefully should be towing it down the road in a week or so. So there we go. <laughs> I wonder what happens to that piece of shit. Any road, that's not what we're here for. This is half an hour on this. Um, but indicator's done. But you see what I mean, right? And that was 2012. It's 10 years later, well, it's 11 years later, and we've just seen the video in the last episode of him telling people about, get your manual, you retards, right? His, his attitude hasn't changed. It, it just is his attitude, full stop. Born in 46, raised up in the sticks, somewhere in North Carolina. Why well, here we go, welcome back. Now, today we're going to continue with... You know, he might do this face, but the guy's a prick. 
Simple as that. All right, procedures of one video, one job. And today I want to fit the indicators onto the Street Fighter project. It has had no indicators on it since I stripped the tail off on all fair and everything else. And I have come up with a rather cunning solution that I think will look pretty cool. Loads of you have asked loads of times, they're going to put indicators in the tail, they're going to do a side mount, all this sort of thing. No, I've always said not going in the tail at all. I want that tail to stay pure and smooth and sleek. The indicators are going somewhere else entirely, but I'm not going to tell you right now. I'm going to show you because the parts have arrived. So let's get stuck in. Ready for this, Ben? Sure am. Let's go. For the first job, let's finish the last video, bolt chain guard on. Wait there, what time is it? Right, it's basically 10 to 12. I'm just thinking, how long is she here for? Because you can tell when she buggers off because it goes on the tripod. For the first job, a bit bored to tears. Let's finish the last video, bolt chain guard on. Oh, perfect. Oh, it's going to rattle off that some wicked. Right. Indicator. Right, look, he put that chain guard on and he's taking these bar ends off and it only took him, like, less than 15 minutes. Why do things take us so long? Oh yeah, look these. Look how the two, the two different ones. Nice. We're taking this all apart again. Now, is he going to take the tubes off? I can't remember at all. Is he going to take these silly tubes off? Okay, now, um, I think you possibly already worked out what we're going to do here, but just as we go stage by stage, this is the bar we're going to use. It's a standard Renthal flat bar. and it you should, they've been, You've been told by Renthal not to drill holes in them because they're aluminium bars. It's a gift from a viewer a very long time ago, right back at the beginning of the build, and you know who you are, so thank you again for this bar. It's definitely going to be the one I use. Now, did this rubber thing, this rubber tubing thing, over the top, Ooh. back at the beginning, I also did it on the forks as well, and I'm not going to go with that now. <laughs> He's just going around undoing everything he did. So I think the bike is evolved out of that. I think ever so slightly. That is stupid. It was a rat bike thing, you know, that I did at the time. And I don't think it's a look that I would want now. So I'm Well, it was a street fighter, then a rat, then a street fighter, then a rat. Now it's just a fucking mess. I'm dispense with the rubber tubes. Keep them for another day, for another project. And I'm just going to run. Keep them. They went in the bin. On the bar, naked, as you can see there. It's not a bad thing. It's a rental bar anyway. Right. Just, oh my god, Renthal's. It's a standard Renthal drag bar. And for the next little bit... You drill a hole in it, please drill a hole in it. I've got to drill a hole. Oh um, yes, because Renthal said do not do that. Under the knee. Under the knee. Under the under knee. The knee. <laughs> got to drill a bar under the knee. Especially in the middle. That's just, you're asking for it. For wiring. Oh, just yes. a little bit. Because, uh, uh, let's find out, Renthal bars. Um, Renthal, because they have a site. Handlebars, drilling holes. No, I don't want the bike forum chat. How to drill precision holes in your handlebars, oh my god. Oh, there we go, from Renthal themselves. Oh. Handlebar warnings. In the event of a crash, rise precaution to take make sure that the handlebars have not been damaged. Check also that none of the controls have been loose and the handlebars do not move in the triple top clamps. Uh, in the event of a severe crash, the handlebars may be replaced. This is because the crash uh, in a crash, the handlebars are the most stressed component on the motorcycle. Most? I don't know, it depends. <laughs> Depends on your crush. But yeah, I get it. They get a twat usually. Do not attempt to straighten the handlebars. Do not modify the handlebars. Do not centre punch, drill, or modify the bars or clamps. So we've got this in two different ways. Do not modify them. Do not centre punch them or drill them. 
Do not centre punch or in any way mark the handlebars. Physical marks of the handlebars can lead, to, can lead to stress rises. Do not clean the handlebars with any form of metal polish or concentrated cleaning fluid. Uh, the use of these products could damage the anodizing finish of the handlebars. The other thing is they don't want you to use anything caustic on them because that greatly reduces the strength of the bars. Right, so they're saying that's why it means um, metal polish or any concentrated cleaning fluids, because a lot of concentrated fluids, some of them cleaning fluids, have uh, caustic. Um, again, same thing. Fat bars do not modify them. Center punch drill in any way. Physical, same fucking thing. Right, in all of them, the twin walls do not attempt to modify the handlebars. Do not center punch and blah blah blah. Now, these handlebars are um, they still got a COVID warning. Oh my god. Um, so I hate drilling holes in handlebars, creates a weak spot. I know, I know, the factory does it. No, well, the factory does it at preheat treatment. That's the difference. I just phoned Renthal and they do not recommend drilling, weakening the handlebars by drilling or cutting the lugs or having blah, blah. It just goes on and on and on and on and on. Right? So they will be age-hardened. I don't know if it's T4 to T6. Um, but they heat treat the handlebars, I'm guessing, after the fact. Oops, that's not what I'm looking for. Just don't do it, right? Don't do it. You're like, why I got any holes in my handlebars? Because a lot of people do it for the little stud, right? The little nipple thing that goes in it. I know they do it. <sighs> just, you going to have to work around. I'm just saying what they say don't do. That's all I'm saying, Right? I've got no other comment on it. Of course it weakens the bars by drilling a fucking hole in it. If you notice, they're really thick-walled. If you look at some OEM bars that are steel, um, they're a lot thinner-walled than the aluminium ones because the aluminium ones, you know, they make them thinner, thicker, so they're stiffer. And a lot of people say, I hate when people say it because they're always wrong. <laughs> They'll say a hollow tube is stiffer than a solid tube. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> That's the most stupid thing I've ever heard. Of course it's not. Let me give you a bar of steel and try and bend it. Then give you a tube. You're more likely to flex it than you are that solid bar. What it is, is that a a tube is stiffer for its per weight than a solid bar. You get what I mean? So, in other words, if you half the weight of a, of a solid bar by making it a tube... You haven't halved its stiffness, right? That's the difference. It's not that tubes are stiffer than solid. <laughs> if tubes were stiffer than anything solid, then everything would be tubed. <laughs> you know, oh, that's I do like. I do. I, it's a good one. Is that one? Oh, what's he doing? Cutting his fingers off. That's what he's doing. Oh, he's clamping it. Look, look, Nora. Hey, do you want to? Uh... Oh, no. Did anyone say in the comments, don't do this? Number plates, lumbar bar ends. No, no, you see. Now, this is the thing. If he said, I'm going to drill a hole in these bars, they recommend that you do not do them. Here, look, here's the rental site or the warning on the packaging. Do not do this. I'm doing this. I don't recommend you do that. Then I'd be fine. Fuck him. It's, it's, it's taking life into your own hands, right? If you fully understand the the issues or possible issues, is fine with it by me, right? If you fully understand the dangers of something, fucking rock and roll. And if you hurt yourself, you hurt yourself. Um, but the fact of the matter is, is he's making it clear to nobody. So you could be twenty years old watching this, going, "Shit, I need to do this. I need to fucking drill a hole in my bars." There's not a problem with doing that. Dell did it. You see, that's the thing. If I turn around to some 20-year-old and say to it, like Isaac, dude, I've been serious now. You take this into your own hands, right? I'm not recommending this. You are just watching an idiot do something that the that the manufacturer recommends not to do. You get what I mean? Like that. you got to make it really clear. We all do things, and yes, health and safety can sometimes be a bit of what is it, or people really don't want to avoid the warranties. The fact of the matter is, is Renthal wants to, because they're, they're not wrong, Right, drilling holes and it will weaken it. It's as simple as that. How much so when it's clamped between two things? You have to do some tests and then you'd have to work out what you're, you know, these things have a factor of safety to them in a way because it's about crashing, not normal operation. 
vibration. There's loads of modes of problems and issues. What could possibly happen? And investigating them all is something that they've done, and they are not happy. They are like, look, you have to drill holes, you know. And like I say, some of them have holes drilled in them, but they're done. Ju well, one, we don't know how they're done. You see, they could be punched. That hole could be punched in, and punching a hole and drilling a hole are two totally different things, right? It could be a frick. It could be a friction drilling, which would, again would be different, right? Because what you've done is you've melted, and you've made almost like a, a fusion ring around it, right? I don't know. They probably just drill them. But the fact of the matter is, is if they do it pre-heat treatment, that does change everything. It doesn't change everything, but it changes things. Um, yeah, so... Uh, you've just got to make people aware of these things. If you're going to do something daft, like I say, right, I watch a guy called Michael Cthulhu, right? And he makes these giant fuck-off swords... And he does some crazy shit. Like very delish, very delesque, right? Like putting a chuck in a drill, right? <laughs> He's not even got a drawbar, which is mental, right? And then he has this big chunk of steel and he welds it to his chuck and spins it and attacks it with the grinder. Now, if that lets go, right, it's going to go and fuck off, maybe straight into his face, right? It's a heavy bit of steel, is that? Jesus. Right, it's gonna kill him probably if it fucking lets go and it goes straight at his face. It's just gonna crack his fucking skull like an egg. But he says this is probably the dumbest thing I've done. This is well dodgy. Don't do this. This is, yeah, you know, and he he understands the dangers and he's only gonna kill himself. Right, and I'm fine watching that because I'm like, yeah, it's this. Sometimes you know, what I mean, it's a thrill to watch and the the work he does is absolutely fantastic. Um. And I think that even if he did get... I don't think he will get a lathe or anything. I know he's just moved um, to Illinois. And um, he's got... He, he's probably not going to get a lathe. I don't know, maybe he might. But he might not even get a lathe. Because his hillbilly way of doing things is actually part of the entertainment. <laughs> not this. This is just fucking mental. Don't use a centre for a fucking counter sink like that. Oh. oh, he's getting the rubber bung out. That's not a rubber one. Oh, you see, now this is the problem, you see. These knobheads who sell these indicators, which the legality of this is... I need to really have a look at this one day. But, uh, who fucking knows? And why is he weighing them? Get some scales. If you're, I don't even know why he's doing it. So there's two tough black sets. There's tough paint... It says tough paint. I think that says satin. And then this says tough paint, satin black. But that says satin black. I don't see what the difference is, unless that's just an old camera. This is a newer one. Like the change of the design. Oh, we can zoom this forward, can't we? Oh, for God's sake. Stop. As soon as I do it, he starts talking. Spot the fundamental problem. Oh, so wait there. Wait there. You've drilled your bars. <laughs> You've drilled your bars and then realised that they don't fit. Look we are. Oh, she's still here. Okay, you can see what we're going for here. These are bar end indicators. I've copied the, well, I haven't copied. This company, I've copied the design concept of motor gadgets that I saw on the net about a year and a half ago when I was thinking of how to do indicators for this bike. I thought I really like the idea of indicators in the ends of the handlebars. It's perfect. Why? Perfectly legal, according to my MOT guy that's going to do the MOT test on this bike. He said, Now, this is sketchy. I don't think it is still. I think that your hands. I, the reason why I don't think it, it literally says that indicators should be seen from the rear, right? Now, people on the cars and other bikes aren't looking at the end of the handlebars, they're looking at the end of her ear. Now, if it's dark, they're going to see them. If it's not dark, they're not going to see anything. They're not going to notice. There's this big argument, right? Um, this 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 retard on YouTube, um, who 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 did? Um, 
there's this Australian guy, right, who showed this motorbike rack, these things, right, this is probably one of the most stupid things I've ever seen, right, and then there was a big hoo-ha, let me get a good picture of it, there was a big hoo-ha in the comments of, uh, I didn't do a video about it, I will do, um, this shit, right, this is fucking stupid, so this Australian guy <coughs> fits one of these, rides it around, right, and he says, yeah, it does, you can feel it, it does make, well, it's stupid straight away, right, <laughs> And he talks about centre of mass and all this rubbish and just it's just nonsense. This is fucking stupid. And the fact of the matter is, is a push bike is really thin, right? And you could be sat at the white line intersection, yeah? Some guy in a lorry. If he looks he's up here in his cabin and he's looking down at you, he's gonna see you and a push bike. In other words, He's not going to see the push bike. And look how far that sticks out. Now, he might come up to here, right? The lorry, he might come right up the back here. And they do. I've had it happen to me loads of times. They get right up behind you, right? Because you're going to go and you're a bike and he knows he's, he's not going to fucking beat you to the bloody punch, is he? But that could be, that could be him going, boop, and butting you into the road. Or this thing lets go and these forks go into the small of your back. You've got to remember, it's a lorry pushing it. Now, as soon as you get hit, you stiffen your arms up. So these forks might go into your back. Now, I know people are going to say, how often does that happen? What are the chances? I'm sorry, right? But it only has to happen to you once. <laughs> right? These things happen. On Christmas Eve, oh, five years ago, on Christmas Eve, I finished work at... I'll tell you when it was. I know exactly when it was. It was when we, me and Isaac, it was Christmas Eve and we did the, the Suzuki, the, the sausage on the barbecue. We did that video. So I finished work about dinner time and I went to the, went to the shed, uh, to the garage, to the lockup, to the council lockup that everyone loved to remind me about. I went to the council lockup <coughs> and Isaac turned up. We did the barbecue thing, the sausage thing. It got dark. I packed up, we hung, hung around for another hour and a half or whatever smoking, we're talking about Christmas and all sorts of shit, and I think we were talking about something to do with UFC or something, and then I went home, on my way home, I got shunted twice that exact night, it was about 6 o'clock, but it's, it's it's fucking 24th of December, it's dark, I got shunted twice, and I was on the, uh, it's the road towards Hardwick, right, leaving Cambridge, next to the fucking um, campus, next door next to cavendish labs and then you basically turn and go through this estate which is where the brand new sainsbury's is you go through that bit i can't remember the fuck it's called nowadays but i stopped there's a right turn you stop there it's traffic lights and this fucking woman went poop she just hit my back tire and it pushed the bike forward now i'm going forward into nothing really it's just a you know it's a junction and there was no one around really we just waiting for the lights because them lights are shite and it's christmas eve most people have gone home already and then, when I went all the way through that estate and come out the other other side, on Girton Road, I think it's Girton Road, that one there, basically the road to Girton where I, live, where I used to live, I stopped there, and another woman went, boop, and hit the back of me. She's like, oh my God, I'm so sorry, did I just hit you? Because they can't see the tyre in the dark, that's probably it, right? They can't see that the back of the bike and the tyre sticks out a bit, right? I got shunted twice. If... If, and you know, it's Christmas Eve on the fucking phones, pulling up slowly, and then they just bump me, right? If <laughs> I had one of these on the back, right, it would have gone over the bonnet probably. But the fact of the matter is, is if it was something like a fucking truck or something, you know, a flat-faced big bloody lorry, no, it would have fucking pushed me off. Push me into the road, push me onto the floor, or push the bike into my back, right? These are retarded. Look at these fucking stupid things. This is retarded. Even that woman's looking at it going, what the fuck is going on here? What is this? Look at all these idiots. Fucking idiots. I'm sorry, if you're one of these, you're a fucking idiot, right? And I'll tell you to your face, you're a fucking idiot. Why? Why would you do this? It, it's like, why would you do this? Look at this dickhead. He's wheeling, so it's onto the <laughs> <laughs> Why would you do this? Get a car. You wanna go on your you wanna go on push bike? Get a car. Right? Fucking what is the Why would you do this? 
I don't even understand it. I want to go trailing. Look at them. Why? I just... I just... <laughs> I just don't get it. Never have done. Why would you want to get... I want to get my push bike and attach it to a bike. I'm going to do this for the video, obviously. But I, I, I don't see it. I don't see it. Go in your car, you fucking retards. Jesus Christ. Yep, they're fine. Bar end indicators are okay, as long as they're clearly... It's like taking the enjoyment out of riding a motorbike so you can have a push bike with you. Fuck's sake. I know what people are going to say, well, I like mountain biking and I like my motorbike, but I don't want to have a car. I've nowhere to park it. Well, take your own life in your own hands. It's fine. Visible from the front and the rear, and when you sit on the bike, your hand doesn't cover the... I can't believe that... that sorry, I'm... Well, I'll leave it for the video, but I can't believe it's legal. I really can't. Up, and obviously that won't be the case. So I'm going to go with bar end indicators. Now I couldn't afford the motor gadgets ones. They are something mad like what was it? Hundred and how much are they? Motor gadgets probably sounds like shite. Make your own. I've got the gadgets bar end. That's not how you spell it. Uh, bar end indicators. It's gadgets, isn't it? A pair of motor gadgets. Got it like shit, don't they? I'd like to see, actually. Do they say... Ooh! Do they say that they are road legal? Motor gadgets. Look at the size of them! Is that... That's not... No, that's... Surely they're just, yeah, I was going to say they just match up. For a minute then, I thought that was the bar. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> uh, who, who, Urban Riders? Motor gadgets. Are these legal? I want to know. I want to see if they say they're legal. Oh my god, look at all these shit ones. Motor gadgets. Most desirable aftermarket are the most desirable aftermarket indicators on on the market. That's a bit redundant, isn't it? You could just say motor gadgets create motor gadget creates some of the most desirable aftermarket indicators. You'd have to put on the market. It's a bit. These are the kind of details that will help your bike stand out. Everyone can stand out by having the same thing, like fucking goths, aren't they? And shoulders above the rest, head and shoulders above the rest. Whatever that means. Designed for harmonious handlebar end into installation. The discrete disc discrete. They're indicators. <laughs> disc shape is almost unnoticeable when off and uses unique and state of the art trans light trans. Ah, oh, it doesn't know if it's male or female technology for dazzling illumination. Oh my god. Alongside a minimal minimal CNC. Oh, I love saying that, don't they? Machined. Fuck's sake, aluminium casing for that super clean look. We love it's so clean that we thought we'd write, we'd fucking either engrave or fucking etch fucking the name in the side of it. These indicators would suit almost any bike due to their incre incredibly subtle, universal yet beautiful look. Universal means it universally fits nothing. The Morblade disc can be operated like any other DL LED turn signal with load resistors and all or all load independent flasher relays for motor gadgets and is E marked for the front turn signal approval. Oh! 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 Right. Be careful. And, and is E marked for front turn signal approval. Oh. Right. Oh. Who writes 100 centimetres? You write one metre, you dickhead. Uh, sold individually, left and right. Select left or right indicators. But they have different ones, aren't they? Just ambidextrous. Oh. Uh, it's nice to give you the wattage. How much they actually... What is it? Uh, EC approved. Technical specs. Yeah, usual shit. Made in Germany. Delivery and reviews. So, these are for front only. Ah, that's strange. 
That's strange that they've gone out of their way to specifically say that. Ew! And you've got to remember, we still follow the EU rules if we're part of the EU or not. £180. <laughs> <laughs> 180 quid for two indicators. How much them shit ones cost? And of course, they're both... The thing is, accessories for bikes, 180 pounds is fucking nothing. Come on, you can buy exhaust systems for like 10 grand, right? What's 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 180 quid for some fucking indicators? Like, really? You know what I mean? It's nothing. ...on the end of the bar, so bike falls over, bike hits a wall or something, or... Yeah. Fuck some. ...scrapes down the side of the house, whatever, you just trashed a 90 pound indicator, you're not going to go there. These are an absolute fraction of that. If they're also shite. Number two is, do you what happens when you scrape them down the wall? You just fucking leave them because they're cheap, or do you buy some more? They weren't even a tenth of that price, were they? Mm, about 15, 10, quid. 15 quid. 10, 15 quid for a pair, and they are beef. I mean, that's steel. Oh, it's beef. It's proper steel in the. Is it steel? Ah, I reckon it was aluminium. I mean, you know, they're proper steel. They're not plastic and nice and beefy, and they are a bar weight. I reckon they're aluminium, but I could be wrong. There's everything else. Now, you've got six LEDs around the inside of them, and they're waterproof as well, all guaranteed. They come from, let's just turn that one off, Bike It. I've had loads of Bike He's had loads of stuff from them. No, they are weight, so maybe they are steel. But the weight, you, weight's just random. Oh, sports bike shop! Yes! Quality. <laughs> right. Oh, they look great, don't they? They've actually got a name on the end of them. What's that name? Is that SC... S-C-U-O? <laughs> oh, is it D? D-C-U-O? No, it's not that either. <laughs> It says there, looks like an S. Is it an S or is it a G C U O? Don't know. Anyone know? I'll wait. <laughs> so, these are amber lights. The universal bar and weights are precision CNC machined. Doesn't tell you out of what. Uh, fitted all bar with 18mm uh, eight, uh, internal diameter. Features a cut out window for bright white LEDs. Perfect. Bright white? Bright white amber. <laughs> Perfect if you want to be more visible at night and be can and can also be used as additional indicators. Ah! <laughs> or can be used as additional indicators. Additional indicators. Integrated LE amber LEDs. So why does they say white? Oh. Oh. Oh, they do white ones as well. So, these, yeah, these are white. Oh, what's that say? Oh, it looks like you, you Unos. You, you Unos. LED. Unos. Never heard of them. Uno, Uno, Uno. Don't know. Ah, oh, but here they are—the CNC machined out of something. Could be fucking cheddar. Who knows? I get stuff in the past. Never had a problem with it, so I'm quite confident. So oh, I don't think you've ever had any. You don't keep things for long enough. You fucking sell them. Even damaged has gone. Only for a. A tenth of the price of some proper fancy ones, but there is an issue with that. With the budget end of the market, you don't get the choice. I can only get them ready-made for 18 mil internal diameter. That's what it says. And these are rental bars, and as we all know, the internal diameter rent. Oh, as we all know, I don't fucking know what the I know it's smaller than 18 because they're not steel ones. The bar is 12 mil, so they are 18 mil. That's 12. They're not going to go in the end. So there's a simple solution to that. Take the rubber boot off and change the nut on the end. I'm going to adapt them so I can use them for the 12mm bars, and it's a real piece of cake. Take the nut off. That piece of rubber there is what squashes down and does the gripping. No, it doesn't squash down. When you wind the bolt in, it actually squashes and it expands. <laughs> that's 18mm thick. I've got some tubing that's only 12mm thick, so I'm going to swap that piece of rubber, grind that nut down because that's physically too big to go in as well, and then they should fit in the end of some 12mm bars. 
Like all these things with parts, accessories, I've said this so many times, it's so common that you have to modify an accessory before it actually fit. Yeah, it's called, it universally fits nothing. It's no drama, let's get it done. That's not 12 mil though. <laughs> That's not 12 mil at all. Ah, oh, this is dumb. So he's locking them off. Oh. Are you turning this knot into a nut? Has it stopped being a nut? Well, that, that's 14 mil. You're not oh, you're gonna really have to squeeze that in there, aren't you? Oh, that's how you strip wires. Oh, awesome. Okay, it's Whoa, bloody hell, he's going tenters, does not there, isn't he? That's how you strip wires. Everyone knows that. Okay, let's put the furniture back on the bar and then put these in last and connect them up with some half decent connections. Do you not test them first? No. No, test them first. And bullet connectors. Ugh. You strip them out and get some proper indicator connectors for them. Little skinny ones. Do you test them first? No? No. Oh, we can, we can speed up. I'll leave the volume as it is. Oh, this is what we call filler. Okay. Slow him down a bit. There we go. Quick demo for you. Now, wow, you they're flashing like folk. See, really nice little solution. I'm very happy with that. You're not going to fucking see them. Look at it. Who's going to see them? Obviously, they're flashing too fast. Yeah. For MOT, but I will remedy that. The I've set off for loads of stuff to button up the end of this project, and it's coming in at different rates. These arrived. I don't really need these till the end of the project, but they arrived. And I couldn't wait to put them on. Couldn't wait to show you the idea and the solution to the indicators. So now I don't have to have anything in the tail whatsoever. They will show to. See, if you're sat there, you're. Hand... I don't believe you. Let's see if we can find a, a rear view of a motorcycle rider. Motorcycle. Rear view rider. Just get yeah, here we go. Let you see, you can get pictures of um, a guy on a bike. So, for instance, this one, you can't see the indicator. There's there's a lot of instances where you won't be able to see. Um, and if you turn, so if you come to a junction that's got a kink in it like this, but you want to turn left. And you come up and you go like that, right? Because that's the way the road goes. Someone might not be able to see you. So you can see from this picture here, right? It'll be just there because they are end weights, right? Just there. Do you think someone's gonna fucking notice them instead of these that are near the light? They're fucking not gonna notice this. And like I say, there'll be many instances. It depends the stance of the bike. It depends the rider that sat on it. Blah 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 blah. But I can think of loads of instances where your elbows are just going to hide what's behind you. Right, uh, different bars, but yeah, different bars. Uh, we're just uh, we're, we're we're at the mercy of the pictures, to be quite honest. Yeah, you'd have to do this really. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there's loads of instances where your 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 hands. Your, I'm just showing your arms, arms that will hide or arms that can hide. You know, you, you tip the bike slightly and you've lost your indicators. It's 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 the reason why they put the back. You know, so you can't obstruct them. Basically, think about how much you'd have to go out of your way to go out and put your hands behind your back. And go, oh, there they are, and put your hands behind over your indicators to hide them. And you can't do both. Well, you could, but not for very long. You know what I mean? It's like. Uh... For real, and that is perfectly legal according to my MOT guy. They are flashing too fast, they need an LED relay. You can fit resistors in there to slow them down, but... That's basically what they do, they just change the fucking... It's because indicators are current, so the on and off of the indicator is current controlled, I believe. Resistance controlled, sorry. Current. And... That determines the speed. It's also I watched a, a technology connections video 
And he was saying that this is why indicators never match up because the resistance in all of these systems will be slightly different because the world. And uh, so that's why you see like three or four indicators when you're at a junction light and they're never all in time. They go in and out of phase with each other. That's more, it's a cool little video. more of a solution to remedy the problem. Whereas if you fit an LED relay, you don't have the problem in the first place. It's the correct result. I did fit resistors to the turbo bike because I was giving them with the bike and they were free. I just clipped them in and they worked and they slowed the indicators. You clip resistors in. Yeah, but I'm, as I'm doing a little bit better on this bike, I'm going to buy an LED relay. So when that arrives, I'm going to fit that and they will then flash at the correct rate for MOT. Happy days. So that's that. Now, obviously, there's loads more odds and ends to do. I think uh, you've got side lights, headlights, tail lights. I've got number plate lights to deal with because looking at the tail here, with this tail. Guys, it's quarter past five. Oh my God. God, she's still here. As you can see, the light lives up in there. And it does shine a little bit of light down, but not a white light down onto a number plate. Number plate's going to kind of be here. So there won't be, with that tail light, anything to create a number plate light. So another little solution that arrived is these. You may have seen these before. They're LED number plate screws. So you basically hold your number plate on with those, you wire them into your number plate light or into your tail light effectively, and then you've got a light on your number plate and you're legal, simple. And again, five pounds, happy days, simple. The first thing I do is take them apart. I take them apart and try and waterproof them properly because they will be. So there we are, buttoning up the jobs as I go. The next thing... And have a look at the solder and if it's fucking dog shit, like get some solder wick, take it all off, clean it with some contact cleaner, then re, you know, basically do it all again if you can. You know what I mean? And look at the LEDs, see what fucking state they're in and stuff like that. Little housing is really what you want, and you can replace stuff with good quality parts if needs be. You can seal it up properly. You know, start using your silicon sealants and all sorts of shit. Seal them up, and then if they blow after that, then what you do is you fucking gut them because all you want is the actual screw bit with the gap in it. And then you go and buy your own LEDs and stuff like that and just fucking do it yourself. You know, put a resistor in it. So just basically copy what they've done. Just buy, like, Samsung resistors and LEDs and shit like that. Or go and buy some good quality parts. You know what I mean? And uh, here's one for you. Well, Matt, how do you do... Right, I don't know what good quality LEDs are. So I go... Uh, brand name LEDs. Not this shit, right? You want to go to a forum. Oh, top 10 LED. Oh, it depends what they're talking about. Right, there we go. Look, someone says here, this isn't a brand name. I've never heard of them. See, the, oh, these for these are for lights, right? No, no. This, I'm talking about the LEDs themselves. You could go to somewhere like, um, oh, what, Farnell, maybe. Maybe they'll sell better things. Oh, here we are. Maybe these are uh, manufacturers. Uh, Osram. Yeah. Can you buy? Uh, can you buy LEDs individually from Osram? Sol. Uh, I'm trying to see if there's any more. GE. The GE do them. G General Electric and GE Lighting. Um. I say LEDs aren't my thing, so I don't fucking have a clue. Halco sounds cool. Nora. Lumi LEDs. Osram, I know Osram. I'm a surprised Philips and Samsung are not. Does Samsung make LEDs? Oh, Eaton, Eaton. They make superchargers and LEDs. Oh, they are electrical. I did not know that. You see the shit you learn. ABB, Rockwell. I know them. Siemens. I thought Siemens might make LEDs. They make a lot of fucking routers and stuff like that. Just electrical components generally. Well, this is a weekend in the next video. I'm going to paint this frame. I kind of probably should have done that today, really, but I just wasn't in the mood today for messy stuff. I mean, yummy indicators arrived, so I wanted to put them in. Absolutely chuffed with those. I love them. I love the look. They're just asking to be twatted, aren't they, by anything. I love the way they are. Anyway, so a little bit of etch primer over this, and then a big sort of six layers of tough paint, and then a week or so to let it dry. I did want to powder coat this, but again, I've said this loads of times, but I'm trying to get this project buttoned up. It's about £50 to have this sandblasted and powder coated, and that's £50 that I don't want to have to spend if I don't need to. I bought two cans 
of Simonized Tough Paint for £12, and that will do. I so want to know if it's Simone's or Simonize. I'm sure. Sure. More than handsomely. So there we are. We'll go on a journey in a minute. That's, that'll be it. Anything else, We've got to watch that bit. Could I just say a, a very big thank you to our patrons because we couldn't do all this without them. Um, we have behind the scenes costs such as. A new oh. battery for the camera to come. And oh my god. A new power lead that we need. So oh my god. I, I, know, I, I know. I buy the same things. Yeah, Thank absolutely. You. In fact, this is what you see. Half the video today has been shot on this. Some of the footage we may or may not be able to use it because that camera keeps messing up, keeps going off, switching itself off the battery in it. It's 14 months old and it just keeps dropping out so there's no power so the camera keeps cutting out. And it's weird I've got the same camera and my batteries have been... There's one here. There's literally the charger is here. The batteries. Do not buy the shit ones. All right, you get these, the actual Canon ones. The Canon ones. Um, this is intelligent lithium ion whatever. This is 2018. See, look, look, see, look there. 2018 for, right? 2018, so that's what? Fucking five years old. Things fine, right? And I've got four of them. That's like where the charger is. Uh, yeah, absolutely fine. They don't buy the shit ones. You buy the cheap ones. Honestly, they don't last. I know out of personal experience. What's the cost of a new battery? Unfortunately, from Canon, £99. Yeah, yeah, they're expensive, but they last you like, 14 months. Fuck off. So it's £100 for a new battery for the camera. So that's what patrons do for us you help us out you make yeah, but i use that all the time and it's been fine make that possible so we... it's been in here in the cold it's been in here when it's hot it's fucking fine. just buy a new battery for that and keep rocking simple no delay or anything else there's other expenses all the time like that expensive they're not related to the build thank you thanks for being out thank you else? have a wonderful wednesday have a wonderful wednesday take it easy thank you for watching the rides right safe and fuck off right let's go on a little journey what was i going on a little journey for Oh, I forgot. Like that. Expensive than not late. Pounds for a new battery for the camera. So no. that's fact. This is what you see. Half the video today has been shot. No. Once had this sand blasted and powder coated. And that's I love them. I love the look. love the way they are. Anyway, so, so to let it dry. I did want to powder coat this. But again, I've said this loads of times. I'm trying to get this project buttoned up. It's about £50 to have this sand blasted and powder coated and that's 50 pounds that I don't want to have to spend if I don't need to. I bought two cans of Simon Oh, that was it. Simon eyes. <laughs> so, all that makes sense. I'll see you in a bit. I'm just going to carry on. Um, if you're still here to watch this, this is going to be a bit of a journey, I'm sure it is. Right, so how would you pronounce that? So does it have a Wikipedia? Right, so it's from Bolton in Connecticut. So it is an American company, pronounced Simon Eyes. So it is Simon Eyes, he's right. Oh my God, that was that easy. Although, where did you get that from? I, I, well, I want to see. Is it? I'm sure Americans would say Simone is, but whatever. Do we have? Surely they have an advert. You know what I mean? Surely they have, it says Simon Eyes, but it hasn't got a link to where that's from. So anyone could have added that. Oh, I wanted the video. No, go back. Videos. This is from them. I've clicked on videos. So why... So, it was made by, what, well, its formation was made possible by George Simmons. See, that's the thing. If it, is that how you space, how, you, how you'd say, Sim, is that Simmons? That's how you'd say that, innit? So, Simone is. You see what I mean? That's why I thought it would be that. Simmons. Pronounce. <laughs> this is sometimes where I go. Not slow. Simons. Simons, right. Is it really? How do you spell Simmons then? Is that is that that? Simmons. Yeah, right, okay. So it's Simons. Simon's eyes. Simon Simon is. Simon is. See that's the thing. 
If it's Simon's, why isn't it Simon is? Who developed cleaning? What is it? What is it? What is it? They changed the name to form Simon is. Simon Eyes? It's a weird one. See, look. Motorist Wise, Simon Eyes. Yeah, yeah, so fair. it will be that way. It? it won't be Motorist Wise, Simonis. Yeah, it'll be Simon Eyes. Right, that's that, that, that's that cleared up. It's just a shame I keep on going to a video. Oh. No. Why is it not taking me to... Oh, it is there, right. So we're going to get some American say it now, just to confirm it. There, wait there, wait there, that's quite funny. Just funny in general. The first car... First, you need a movement. The first Model T in America was 1908. And he made a polish in two years later. You need a visionary. <laughs> like, none of them... Did they need polishing yet? <laughs> like, I know the first one was ever released, but how many were sold in two of the first two years? You need... For fuck's sake. And you remember our commitment to quality. It's got to be here somewhere. Simon Eyes is geared. Simon Eyes, yeah. It's strange. It's just not what I would have thought it was. Simone's looks like it's what it would be. But, yeah. Hope that makes sense. And it's Simone's. Fuck you. 